Hi, I'm Dr. Carol Darsa, author, trauma psychologist, and founder of Reconnect Trauma Treatment Center in Los Angeles. Today, we're going to be talking about the body and the trauma. So a lot of people, when they have gone through a trauma or they have stress and they go to therapy, their first inclination is to understand their brain, to talk about it, and to really believe that if they understand and analyze over and over again, they can overcome what's happening, right? Or you've heard a lot about the power of the mind and the power of the positive thinking. These are all very important things, but I think it's really missing the opportunity to include the body in the process. Our bodies actually give us a lot of information and also they hold on to a lot of past trauma. I say fortunately and unfortunately because we, can, because we can use that for our benefit. So if you have been through especially physical oriented trauma and you don't remember certain details, don't force yourself to remember it because sometimes when our minds don't remember, our bodies do. We can actually use the body in order to get some healing from the past experiences and including current stress. So let's talk a little bit about how that's possible. When you experience a certain feeling or when you remember a certain traumatic uh, experience or incident in your life, you usually are asked, how do you feel? Or what do you think about that? So, but the next question should be now, how do I feel in my body as I think of this incident or this stressful and traumatic situation? So, and I'm not talking about feeling like sadness or anger you know that kind of a thing but how does it feel in my body what do I sense so as I'm talking about something does the, my stomach get tied do I get maybe dry throat or clenched fists or my heart is beating faster or could be something positive or my shoulders are relaxing I can take a deeper breath or I'm holding on to my breath. If you just start becoming aware of what's happening in your body, this is a good step towards healing. So try it with me as you're just listening. Just notice maybe something that's stressful in your life. Not something too traumatic, please, but maybe something that's a little bit stressful currently. And yes, ask yourself, what am I feeling? What emotion? Maybe what the incident is. But then notice your body right away. So as you're noticing, don't panic. Don't try to run away from it. Don't try to make a change. So uh, let's say you notice that your breathing is not good. So don't take a deep breath. This is just about being mindful and just about really noticing without any judgment, without trying to change anything. And so as you sit with that sensation and take a moment, notice the rest of your body. Is there part of your body that feels maybe calmer or more centered or more relaxed, then just notice that. It could be your shoulders or maybe your hands feel warm and nice. And just kind of stay paying attention to those two parts in your body and notice what happens next. Our bodies can help even in making decisions. So have you ever been in a situation where someone says, uh, hey, do you want to, what do you want to do? What kind of job you're looking for? And let's say maybe you're torn between making a decision about uh, working here or there. So you can really use your body to make that decision. So when you hear, okay, I'm going to work here. What happens in your body as you think about that? Does your stomach react to it or any other reaction? And then pause and then think of the other thing. And just again, notice what happens in your body now. So when you try to make a decision, when you're trying to sort of check in about how you're feeling, ask your body and not your brain. Let's make that into a habit, including your body into your healing and into your day-to-day -day practice. Let's look at different areas of the body because everyone has different reactions in different regions. And so getting to know your own anatomy in a way and how you react to stress and trauma will be very important for your healing. So one thing that I recommend is to scan your body from head to toe as you are going through any stressful event, including really remembering uh, your traumatic experience in your, in your life. So here are some of the examples. So you might be 
the kind of person that really tightens their jaw. A lot of that is very much stress related. Also, people who are holding on to their anger feels a lot of their tightness in their jaw. Uh, in fact, this could happen a lot when you are sleeping, if you're having bad dreams or are trying to process some uh, negative feelings in your in your system, in your consciousness, you might have a lot of tightness or, or even clenching or clenching your teeth and, and your jaw on a regular basis. Uh, another typical sign of stress is actually in the shoulders and in the neck. So it's very interesting because neck is really about sort of support. So if you're not feeling supported in your life, you might end up having a lot of neck problems. Um, shoulders is another area where a lot of the people when they are under stress, they're putting their, you know, they're sort of in that position or they're in a very collapsed position. If they feel sort of depressed or uh, really drained in their lives, you might have sort of this hunchbacked position without really even realizing it, right? That's why I'm encouraging you to be in touch with your body. Uh, a lot of other feelings go through the stomach, particularly with younger kids. If you're hearing young children talk about having stomach problems, often it's related to some anxiety or, or something that they are stressed about. And of course, you know, hopefully there's nothing medical, but I'm talking about in general. Uh, the heart palpitations is a very common thing, of course, of uh, anxiety right away when we have anxiety. Uh, sweaty hand palms, those are also signs of nervousness, ongoing uh, generalized anxiety. Uh, so, well, let's talk about foot. People who are just constantly moving their legs, right? The nervousness, uh, sort of the energy that's not getting discharged out of body can be shown, can, can really show up in the body in that way. So get to know your body, really just track it. There's no right or wrong answer, but the more you track, the more you ask yourself, what's happening in my body right now? The more connected you could stay really with yourself. And again, our tendency is to go up into our heads, but then we're really missing an opportunity to notice what's happening in our bodies. And when we don't, what can happen is you can eventually build a chronic health problems. So sometimes uh, GI issues or other uh, chronic migraines, again, not medically explained, of course, could be really result of accumulated stress over time. Do you know that your posture actually has a lot to do with your mood? Here's an interesting example. So try that with me. Um, collapse your body a little bit, sort of put your head down this way, really shoulders down, and then say, I'm very happy. Okay, and now try putting up, sitting up straight, really just your back and your chin upright in a position and say, I am sad, I don't feel good about myself. What do you notice? It's kind of hard to be really happy when you're in this position, right? So believe it or not, when you are feeling defeated, exhausted, tired, even though yes, our body wants to go into sort of crunch mode, you might find that it will help your mood by just sitting up. So it actually has a direct effect on your mood. So I highly recommend for you guys to just constantly watch the way that uh, you're sitting. Uh, if you notice it a lot of the times when um, I'm, I'm working with clients, those of you who know me, and when I'm doing the videos, I'm really trying to stay in that uh, seated upright position as much as possible. It's, it, it helps me to stay grounded very much. Let's talk about a few more ideas of how to stay connected to your body, how to really um, help healing through the body. Well, yoga is a wonderful way to do that. Yoga is not just an exercise. I mean, in the Eastern philosophies, there's a reason why uh, yoga is really a form of living and being. So there are a lot of different ways that you can use yoga, but it's for your well-being, not just physical exercise. Um, the other types of things could be Tai Chi, of course, eating healthy, uh, exercising regularly is a part of uh, being uh, healthy in your body and really showing that you care about your body. Uh, if you are a trauma survivor and you need to process more, I highly recommend going to therapies that are more somatically oriented. At Reconnect, for instance, we are very much body-mind oriented treatment center and we treat uh, everybody um, including always the body into the healing. So we never forget the importance of that. 
Uh, and of course, uh, not doing drugs or alcohol is a part of showing self care and love to your body. So it's not about how you look, right? I'm talking about internally how it affects your, um, your well-being emotionally as so that you never forget that you're a whole package you're not just your mind you're not just uh, your job or you're not just uh, a parent but your whole being and wholesome means includes your body as i mentioned in my other videos my uh, audiobook of the trauma map book uh, came out so if you want more details about really um, helping your healing via your body and doing grounding techniques and other things, you can uh, listen to it on the audiobook or read it on, on the book, The Trauma Map. Uh, thank you again and uh, see you next time. And remember, trauma equals disconnect and healing equals reconnect. Stay connected. Mm -hmm.